Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like at a clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom Beepow edition. We, uh, where we give you all the picks for the day for you people who like to plant wagers on those sort of things. I'm keeping my voice down as it's very early in the morning, but I was awakened by the whatever it is. <laughs> and, uh, felt I, I have to go do picks. I felt a deep inner yearning to do picks for you. You know, I, I just couldn't sleep. <laughs> but it's, I don't want to wake everybody up. Uh, I have a letter here, and it goes uh, tip on shield from Rishon Israel. Rishon? Rishon? Israel asked, uh, can we see Helen? And who is she? Well, um, she, Helen's very shy, and that's the reason why I'm keeping it down here. Helen's in uh, in her room having her sleep in the middle of the night. I don't want to wake her up. And uh, she's uh, she's the one that stitches together and uh, sews together all your pearls of wisdom necklaces that you get when you subscribe. And uh, I met her in the hallway a little while ago, older lady. And I uh, decided to, to live in her house. <laughs> That's it. She's a very nice lady. Uh, so she knits them all together and uh, we send them off. She also grinds the pearls. Did you uh, grind, you know what the pearls are? Pearls are here. She sent, she left some here. She grinds the pearls up. These are some, some blue pearls for tranquility into your land here. She does that. So thank you, she, Tip on Shield, and, th and send all your letters. We love your letters. Uh, Guido goes down to the letter room every morning, and he picks up the sack of letters, and he pours them all over the letter table, and then we all do the Perlo dance. And Yeah, it's fun. So anyways, we got NHL picks for you today. But, uh, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's who Helen is. And uh, so we'll look at yesterday's picks first. Uh, now Saturday, we don't have enough time to go through Saturdays, unfortunately, but we, uh, Saturday was down a little bit. The biggest one was Chicago and over with, uh, Detroit. That was cray cray. I never saw that coming for, there was a lot of voodoo stuff that happened on Saturday. I'd like to forget about it if I could. I didn't go down as bad as I thought though. San Jose, the San Jose game saved me. Uh, Vegas, um, no, no, sorry, Vegas didn't win in reg. That didn't save me. <laughs> but the later games, anyway, saved me on Saturday. But we'll look at yesterday's, because yesterday's was one of the finest in the land, for sure. So, um, scores. So, tell me down there in the comment section how your weekend was how your picks went uh, also remember if you sent give me parlays or if you comment in the comment section that you would like a month of um b pal then i will send you a free b pal right to uh right to your door you can have one month free what's going on here why is this not working it this way then if you're not going to do it that way there you go okay okay there we go so we had uh bruins versus rangers i actually went rangers pl here is the one that i had incorrect but for very small but we did have the under and it was under um i don't know Boston was going to turn it around. It was looking back. I, I thought it was pretty silly to think that Boston was going to play three poor games in a row against a young uh, Rangers team. So um, that's uh, we live, we learn, don't we? Yes, we do. Uh, I had I didn't take the to I didn't take the line here. Both of these teams. I, I did lean the Predators because the Blue Jackets. My gosh, 
Yeah, it's just getting ugly there. Um, Tortorella could be on his way out here soon. I I get I I would imagine um, he's probably getting a little bit of window to work on having Lion A in the lineup. But as it stands right now, that lineup looks just totally disheveled. Not just lineup, but their their energy in that team. I won't be picking them for a while, I don't think. But I we did have the under for pretty good money, so we did well there. This was our big one of the day. We had the Flyers in regulation and an under for uh, large pearls. Turned out exceptionally well for us. Uh, we also had the under and the Capitals here. The Capitals gave us a bit of a scare. I think it was Capitals in reg, yeah. So we, we nailed that. Uh, and Islanders and the under here. So that was fantastic. And here we had a little bit of a blip, except we did have the Blackhawks in reg. I actually strongly recommended the PL here. I really thought the Blackhawks were going to light it up. For Philadelphia, too, I recommended the PL as well. So that if anybody would have taken that recommendation, they would have been doing really well for themselves. So, yeah, we had Chicago. And uh, we had the under though. I didn't think they were gonna. I didn't think they were gonna lace them that much, but they did. And uh, but the under was under not very large pearls. It was under smaller pearls. So up quite a bit. The little bit. I think we were down about two and a half shells uh, Saturday, and this easily made that up. As a whole, overall, we're probably with all the sports I do on Patreon, we're up close to fifty units. So. Lots of money. If you played every play that I did, whatever your unit is, that's what you would be up. And not only that, just the frolic. The frolic, my friends, is well worth, is even more worth the units. So, highly recommend you go there and check it out. Comment in the comment section. I'll give you a free month and we can have some fun. Okay, let's look at our picks for today, shall we? Um... Where are my picks? There we go. Okay, tough card. Very tough card. I had to really, had to do my my ohms, get in my shockers in line for this one because uh, definitely difficult uh, games. Florida versus Carolina. Um, both teams are playing fantastic. Honestly, Carolina is like the class of the league right now. Pretty darn close. It's Carolina, Toronto, and probably Tampa Bay. And then Florida, Florida, Carolina, Tampa Bay in this uh, division is really making for fun stuff. Um, however, I'm just because they're at home and they're both really tired because they're both playing five games in seven. Now, Carolina's five games in seven has had a, a, a lot more travel. Florida's been home the whole time. So I'm going to lean Florida here. Um, especially if triggers in that and that's another perk about going to uh, be pal picks on patreon I give updates throughout the day on changes that may happen um, I'm still not completely sold on Bob Rofsky, but I'm getting there it's he's starting to look better if Carolina is going with Reimer I'm taking Florida all day here now depending on now I say that I'm have uh, not uh, you know, confident with the goaltending. However, when teams are playing five games in seven and not tired, uh, generally less goals are scored. So I'm probably going to lean the under here on six. Uh, you're getting good juice on that because these teams can score a lot, but tired teams generally score less. So I'm going to go under six for that. Ottawa versus Calgary. Now, Calgary just destroyed Ottawa last game, and uh, they were angry, okay, after losing. They got all hyped up, and uh, now the question is, can that carry on into this game? They're in a situation where they're playing five games in seven nights. Um, I'll take a look at that here real quick. Um, Calgary, one, two, three, four. Monday's over here. It's the next day if you switch the page over, so we won't do it. One, two, three. Day off. Yeah, five games in seven nights. And you'll say, well, they had a day off in between. Yeah, but when you're playing, I mean, these were tough games. 
They got beat up here. They beat up Ottawa here. Um, Ottawa should be more rested. And should be angry and coming back here. I have Ottawa PL as of right now because their lineup, I mean, Calgary, it's really tough. It's, it's really um, Murray that is the issue with me. Uh, they don't really have another goaltender to put in here. It's probably Murray. If Murray is playing real well, and this year it's been like one or the other, either really bad or really good, pretty much, um, then Ottawa will likely win this game. And uh, also, if you know, Riddich has been playing, for the most part, really well. He had one bad game and then came back and played well again. Markstrom looks for Calgary. This is the goaltender for Calgary. Markstrom looks like he's going to be out again. If you want to play it safe, uh, I would say Ottawa on the spread. Because since you're getting 156, it's almost the same as taking Calgary on the money line. Um, I would it, it's a very tough call. This is a very difficult game because Calgary's been so inconsistent. If you just play long term, going what you're going to make in the long term, which is really how you should bet, you should keep a tab of how much you're making every day and see what you're up over time. Like we're up 50 units on all of our sports. I've had good days, I've had bad days, but overall I'm way over. You probably want to take Ottawa here, ML. With that kind of juice, the value on Ottawa here is the play. So, there you go. If you're worried about what you're going to win tomorrow, take Ottawa PL and put it in a parlay. Um, that's what I would say. Vancouver versus Winnipeg. Um, I just can't take Vancouver. I'm trying to find a spot for them. But against a Winnipeg team that's just flying and... I don't believe they're overly that taxed here as far as the uh, schedule is concerned. Yeah, no, they're not. They're this is they're going to be at home. Oh yeah, uh, Vancouver isn't either. They they haven't played for a couple of days now. Um, these are two uh, healthy teams, fairly healthy teams with uh, with rest, but. Until I see a Vancouver team that has any confidence at all, I gotta go to I gotta go Winnipeg ML here. Um, might even consider in reg for the extra juice. Seriously, where you'd be getting about two twenty two thirty. Um, as far as over under is concerned, um, as far as total is concerned, they're probably what is it six and a half? Jeez, um, I'd probably go under there. Uh, simply because if Winnipeg's really rolling, Vancouver's not going to score all that much. Now, if Vancouver decides to put Holtby in, maybe I change my mind. Um, Hollabuck's getting back to where he was before last year. I mean, he struggled a little bit early. So, um, I, 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 Vancouver might have a hard time scoring enough to get this onto an over. And if Demko's in net for Vancouver... He actually has played fairly well considering the Vancouver, how Vancouver's played in front of him. So this could be like a 4-2, something like that. Um, yeah, somewhere. I, I'd probably lean the under, but Winnipeg is probably the play. St. Louis, Anaheim. Uh, St. Louis is on a three-game losing streak right now, something like that. And they're, they're very injured. Uh, if there was a spot for Anaheim, this is probably it to beat St. Louis. Um, they could make a comeback here. I, it's a tight game. It's a tight game. It's a tight choice. One thing I would say is that I probably lean the under here. Um, St. Louis did score a lot in their last game. Um, they need to score a lot to win because they're banged up on defense with Pareko out. And uh, with Pareko, that team looks completely different. Um, but Anaheim will have Gibson in that. They're playing fairly strong defensively um, this year. Although against Arizona, there were some falters there. Probably lean the under. Um, again, this, team, this feels like uh, Anaheim PL would be the play, the safest play. 
Um, it should be a one goal game. Uh, you're getting what one? It's getting pretty poor juice on that. Maybe it's a parlay day. <laughs> I'm not huge on St. Louis money line. Uh, 171 against Anaheim uh, with how they've been playing. Um, if you're again going back to what we were saying before, if you're looking at long term, this is probably a what 55% chance St. Louis wins this game, maybe 60% chance. So on your 40%, you're getting 225. Probably that's the play if you're really going to calculate your overall long-term earnings. Anaheim to win here is probably the play. Uh, Toronto, ver Toronto versus Edmonton. Edmonton, if Edmonton could play like they did the first period against Toronto for a whole game, they, pr they win this game. Um, they're at home. It's uh, there. It, I'd say in Smith right now in that. By the way, there's no goaltender confirmations for any of these games yet, which makes it difficult. Um, although it it um, in the injury reports, Anderson is still hurt. However, Campbell's been playing exceptional. One thing I think the best play on this game is the total under six and a half. Um, Simply because both goaltenders are playing well and Matthews will be out again, I believe. But uh, that could change too. That one could specifically could change. So like I said, I get over to Patreon. Let's see. Uh, uh, I'll let you know if Matthews is in there. If Matthews is in, I'd probably lean the over. If he's not in, I'm probably leaning the under. I'm going to say Edmonton comes back and plays their game the way they should. Uh, Tippett had them in a very in a very uh, good head space before that Toronto game. And I'm going to bank that he brings it back. I'm going to take Edmonton on the ML here again on that. Um, Minnesota versus Vegas. Um, this is a, I, this is a really tough card all the way up, all the way through really. Um, Talbot played fantastic. Talbot will is back and will probably be playing here. Um, Flurry is back and probably be playing here. Are they? Get, please tell me they're giving you six, five, six and a half, on the are uh, on the total. No, only five and a half. Okay, wow. Um, both of these teams can score like crazy, regardless of who's in net. Honestly, um. I'm gonna lean the over 5.5. It's probably the play here over in the, over the line. Um, Minnesota is a lot better than people think. I'm probably gonna go Minnesota. On the um, I'm not strongly I'm not too confident in it, but it it's almost close to a coin flip here. I'll give Vegas an edge at home, but at 169, I'm not really uh, I don't really like that that uh, risk for the odds. So. Probably take Minnesota ML. Um, again, this all of these feel like a PL into a parlay, like Minnesota or something like that. And I'll do parlays on my Patreon, which I hit at quite the regular basis. I about 50% of the time I hit my parlays on four to one odds usually. So you figure it out. I'm up quite a bit there. Um, Colorado versus San Jose. This is the game of the night right here. Uh, Colorado in regulation. Uh, San Jose just is t uh, Carlson is back for San Jose, but their defense looks terrible and Bruckner doesn't seem to be able to do anything with it. It's mostly a roster issue. They just don't have the players that they need to uh, to be able to uh, uh, be successful. Simple as that. And Colorado, um, although they struggled a little bit early, has come back and looked very good the last couple of games. Um, they look solid. The only thing I will say is McCarr is out, but um, that's that's tough. But their their overall defense is still solid. They started hitting the last couple of games, and when Colorado is hitting, especially against a soft team like San Jose, it should lead to destruction. Um, Jones will be in that. Jones probably has played very well considering who's been in front of him as of late. Um, now I, th uh, but I'm still, especially since I believe they're giving you, 
You might even want to go on the spread here too at 220 for Colorado to win by on PL. I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, tell you not to do that. That seems like a pretty decent play. Uh, Colorado probably is going to win this by two, 55 to 60 percent of the time. For that juice, that's a good play. You're getting well over plus money at 50 percent play. That's not. That's a good play. Um, as far as the total is concerned, look at this. You're getting six. This has got to be over. If that's not over, I don't know what is. So, yeah, I'm putting big on the over at over six against a San Jose team that just lost seven to six against St. Louis and has been pretty much losing a lot of games by a lot of goals. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely doing that. Um, well, that's my full 42%, boys and girls. That's all I have to give. Uh, um, get out there and make your bets, as a lot of the people like to say. By the way, baseball season's coming up right away. Um, over on uh, Rick at Picks, I highly recommend you check him out. He's one of the best baseball cappers I have ever seen. Go check him out. He's also got a Patreon as well. Um, also, I am going to be adding Capper's Comparison. Go check out Capper's Comparison. He is fantastic. He's doing mainly UFC. But what he does is he takes all the UFC cappers and he tells you what they all picked. He gives you so you can go to all one place to see what all the UFC cappers are doing. He is also going to be providing me UFC picks for my Patreon. His percentage is crazy. I'm happy to have him on. Uh, we're all next uh, ball comes up. I'll be doing a lot of ball as well. Uh, NCAA and basketball were way up this year. We're just up, 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 up. So I recommend you go comment in the comment section. I'll send you the link. Take the lar take our uh, largest pack, our highest package or um, best package at uh, premium picks at twenty five bucks. I'll reimburse you. You can try it for a month. Okay, okay. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you. Okay, bye.